We are leaving China. Not at this exact moment. Now I'm still packing Sansan's old baby clothes. Um, but we are leaving China in about a week, in a week and a half. And um, when I'm publishing this video, we are probably not in China anymore. We're hopefully not in China anymore. Because if we are in China, that means something went wrong. Mama, okay, okay. So we were supposed to leave for Beijing on January 14 and then leave China on January 15. And unfortunately, something did go wrong. So when I'm posting this video, we are still in China. Sansan just wants to wear all the baby clothes. Then if you Sansan. If you've been following my channel lately, you know that I'm pregnant with our second child and I want to give birth in Sweden, not in China. There are many reasons for that. Um, one being language. I prefer to be around people who speak Swedish. And uh, another one is our financial situation. And then the one that has been stressing us out the most lately is my blood type. I am racist negative, RH negative, and in China, I think it's 99.6% who are positive. So that means that my blood is not in stock, and it also means a lot of hassle getting the shots I need. Because if you are negative but a positive baby, then you need to get two special shots. Look at these tiny little socks. Now, now I did manage. Sensen has a new shirt. Now I did manage to get the week, the shot I needed at 28 weeks, but it wasn't easy. I had to do it privately, import it into mainland China and then find someone who could give it to me, the shot, because they can't give it at the hospital. It's not available at the hospital and it's forbidden to give it because it's not part of their medicine, so they can't guarantee what, what it is. So we decided that I wanted to go to Sweden for my delivery, but going to Sweden during a pandemic is not that easy either, especially not with a husband who is a Chinese citizen. But that was our big wish for 2021. When entering a new year, I'm sure I'm not the only one who likes to you know, think ahead and make plans and write lists for the year to come. And not knowing exactly where I will be in the world makes some of the planning a little bit more difficult. But things like my own, like writing goals for my business or for my own personal development and my skills, that's something I can do really anywhere in the world. And this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of courses for all creative and curious people out there, no matter if you're a beginner or already have come far on your learning journey. Apart from handicrafts and more art-related uh, classes that I mentioned in previous videos, they also have classes in areas like business development and personal development. You can have a look at their category Thrive in Lifestyle, where you find classes like this one from Michelle B, who is a great YouTuber and teacher. And our class is called Designing the Life You Want for Exercises for Clarity and Motivation. And it's just a great way to figure out in what direction you want this new year to take you. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with their annual subscription and there are no ads anywhere to be seen on their website. If you want to give it a go yourself, set some direction for 2021, get a creative start of the year. The first 1,000 of my subscribers who clicks on the link below gets a free trial of their premium membership. So check it out. The direction we've chosen for 2021 is Sweden. And after getting all the paperwork together, which wasn't easy by the way, uh, we went to Beijing, to the Swedish embassy in Beijing for a photo and an interview. <laughs> now at this point, my initial flight to Sweden, the first flight I booked in the beginning of December, had already been cancelled. 
and we had also decided that we wanted to apply for a longer um, permit for Johan to stay in Sweden, not the three months stay that he usually gets. And uh, that's because as a foreigner it would be very difficult for me to get back into China. So we did not want to be separated just after having our second baby. Um, it just didn't sound like a fun idea. Now luckily due to our situation, me being pregnant, our case was prioritized. And a few days before Christmas we got some positive news and Yung Hong is allowed to go and he got a long visiting permit to Sweden. Now to enter Sweden, Yung Hong needs his permit card. And um, since we got approved just before Christmas, and New Year's, the waiting times are longer and um, he can't enter Sweden without this card and this is where something went wrong. So we so the car didn't arrive as expected and it was also not guaranteed to arrive before our flight. It would most likely arrive on the same day that our flight took off and the chances of it arriving early in the morning so that we would actually make it to the airport in time seemed very slim. So now we had to push our tickets for more than a week and that means that when we leave I'll be 33 weeks pregnant which is an ideal but with the doctor's notice saying that my pregnancy is healthy and all it will be fine um, so I'm not that worried about not being able to leave but um, obviously I wish we could have done it earlier <laughs> according to plan but that's life i guess there are also some positive sides to it it means that we have more time before we leave it means more of my mother-in-law's cooking because now when she knows we're leaving she's just cooking all the best dishes all the time for us so it's really nice <laughs> and then just more time for packing and filming and preparing because we really need to prepare this is a long stay we're going in january and we're staying until the end of august and I really do hope that I'm allowed back into China by then. My flight ticket in December was cancelled. We changed to the 15th of January, but that didn't work because Yong Hong's like, permit wouldn't arrive on time. And then we changed to the 24th of January, and now we just got news that the flight on the 24th was cancelled. Why was it cancelled? Trying to figure out why the flight was cancelled so that I know a little bit how to think with our other, like if we're rescheduling or if we're changing airline. Now I'm honestly quite scared. Scared of not being able to go back to Sweden. <laughs> so one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is meeting my family and my friends. Like I have some friends that have kids now. Because I haven't been back for a year and a half and I haven't met their kids. So it feels so strange. Obviously it's going to be really even weirder now because I can't meet with a lot of people because of the virus. So that's a thing that I hope will pass soon <laughs> so I can actually meet people. It's gonna be really strange to go to Sweden and not be able to meet the people I usually meet there. But uh, I'm looking forward to meeting my family. I'm also looking forward to Yong Hong spending time in Sweden, like a longer period of time. Last time he was there for three months, which is quite a long time, but we had our first child 
and we basically spend a lot of time just inside with our baby so this is gonna be like the first time it's more that we actually feel like we're gonna live in Sweden for a period you think I got to read yeah yeah to read yeah this should be deeds me got to to what the much yeah this year to go to time Dizzy Yeah,很多不一样的想法。我觉得你要去瑞典是很好，因为我现在中国已经几年了，但是所以我感觉我比较了解你，了解你的文化，对啊，但是没去瑞典这么长时间。对。If you watch my previous videos, you may know that I can appraise the Chinese outside toilet. Um, but I must admit that now being <laughs> pregnant and in the middle of winter I do look forward to a bathroom with you know, floor heating and a hot shower 24-7 and an inside bathroom in general just an inside toilet it's gonna be really really nice 